hi guys it's Kobe here and in today's video we are going to talk about 10 ways to animate objects without any keyframe and you are going to learn a lot in this one so we will talk about using C motion using effectors dynamics tags expresso and a whole lot of interesting way of animating without using keyframes so let's get into cinema 4d so we will start with effectors and the first one is going to be the plane effector so i'll quickly create a simple cube and let me say i want to just animate it to move in any position like i'll set a keyframe say i want it to go on the z right all i have to do is to simply come to my effectors actually let me come to more graph effectors and i'll choose plane effector then I'll make it a child of the cube, right? And you know the effectors can also act as deformers. So if you come to the attributes of the plane effector, you can see we have deformer. All I have to do is to select the deformer. And instead of making it affect like the deformation of, I can make it affect the object point or polygon. But in this case, I want it to affect the object as a whole. So I'll just choose object. And you can see it has moved the cube upwards. That means now the plane effector is in control, right? So we can come into the parameter and determine where we want our cube to move to. So I can actually make it move go on the Y, right? Let's say at this side. And this is how, like, if let's say I want to animate, I probably would want to set a keyframe at frame zero on the ground. And maybe at frame 30, I want it to be this high, right? But in this case, if I hit play, it doesn't move so how do i make it move like setting a keyframe so what i have to do is to come to the fields and in here i can simply come to the um, layers here these special layers and there we have time right so if now i hit play and see from frame 0 to frame 30 it moves to this one like you set a keyframe to it but what makes this even more powerful is that you can you have actual control of your curves and how you should move. So if I come to the remap, right, in the time layer, you can see we have remap. And if I come down here, I can change the contour mode to say curve, right? And I can see I can now control the curve. So I can do those animation like like I see if I've set a keyframe and now you can see. So it's very, very powerful and you can use it to do a lot of stuff. So I can change it this way as well. Let's see how you see. So it's very, very powerful like that. So for actually, let me show. So I'll come in here. I have this can object here. I'll actually come in here and I'll put it in like a null object. I'll make it a child of null object and I'll create the plane effector. So I'll come to the effector plane i'll make it a child of the null object and now um let's set some few parameters so i'll actually first of all make it affect the object and come to the effectors like i want to move it forward right so let's actually set our camera so that we want to do a quick um shot like that so i'll make our camera everything face uh, camera like this right maybe zoom, bring it out a little bit and now all I'm, I'm going to use this one to do like a quick product animation shot so I'll, I'll simply sit there with the plane effector right now I've actually I tell it to affect the object and now I'll say it should move it close to the camera so I'll do right so make like come to something like this maybe I think this one is cool and I want it to rotate as well. So I'll say, okay, it should rotate. So I can set it rotation. Maybe come close to the camera in this way. So you can see it's affecting the object. So what you can do is actually, let's put this one in the null object. So I'll select the can hold shifts and I come to um, the object, hold alt, I mean alt, then click on the uh, connect. You can see it has connected everything. So right, let's say this is, how I want my animation to kind of end, All right? Yeah, just this one is just a quick um something that I have to try. I'm I'm kind of trying. So if I go into my plane effector and come to my fields and add my time and hit play, you can see it's doing an animation. It's coming close to our camera, and this is very powerful. So I can actually come into the time maybe. Um, 
in the layer I'll make it say it should the frame should take like 90 frames I'll make this one longer a bit and I'll hit play and it takes forever but one thing I can do is that I can come into my animation the remapping and I'll set it like I did to curves and I'll bring it down here and I'll say okay you know what I want it to reverse so I set it starts like this and I want it to go back to its default position so I'll bring it down right and maybe if I hold control and click somewhere here it give us another point so I'll come down and I'll adjust the animation this way All right and let's see what we have so if I hit play to so I can just adjust without keyframe right also all this I'm doing without keyframe and now let's hit play again see so it get close to the camera and it goes out so now we can simply come into our plane effect if you want to let it get more closer you can just let it come closer to the camera just adjust the rotation the way we want it and we have no keyframe now we've done a product shot maybe we want it to we want the logo to affect um look at the camera right but in this case you have to use it so i can create another plane effector and this one should be controlling the rotation just the rotation so i'll just take off the position and make sure it's affecting the objects as a whole objects i'll make it the the second plane effect i create i'll make it um be under the first one because the arrangement is very important then i'll actually come back again so all i want to do is to rotate so I'll Let's say rotate it to minus um, this way. So let's say I'm cool with this, right? Then now we go ahead and add the time layer again. So I'll go ahead and add the time, and I'll make it long ninety as well. But immediately I start that one to be rotating, so it doesn't look well. So but I don't want it to rotate, start rotating. I want it to come at the end, so I can come into the remapping again, like I did set it to curve and i'll say should go to somewhere here go at the tip that's where i want it to start so now if i go hit play comes close you can see now lips i can actually increase with the plane second one i can actually increase um come to the i mean the the fields and increase the time I come to the layer and I'll make it maybe 100 right so that you see it's rotating so I'll play nice I mean actually honestly didn't plan this but it looks fun and interesting that's how I get it. so yeah you can use the plane effector to do like serious animation without actually setting any keyframe and all this has been done without any keyframe yeah, so I have a full tutorial here on YouTube that explains how to use the plane effector to do animation, which is you can find on my YouTube channel here. Plane effector for animation is not for the without keyframes. So that's for the plane effector aspect. Now the next is we are going to use the time effector. So let me go back to the scene I started with. So I'll come to I'll come here and I'll delete the plane effector. So I still have the cube and the time effector is so simple and easy as well. So I can simply come into my effectors i'll come here and i'll choose the time effector you can also come into the effectors from the demograph effectors right the same way i'll make it a child of the cube and then i'll come to the deformers i'll say it should affect object not points or polygon and i can see instantly the cube has rotated that's because if you come into our time you come to the parameters you can see it sets the rotation uh, rotation h to 90 so what happens is that every uh, 30 seconds that's one second it rotates 90 degrees so that's basically so immediately adds it to anything it starts rotating and this one can be very useful in some situations something that you want to rotate it's not only rotation that it can affect it can also affect scale as well so if i should see increase the scale of this one and hit play i see it's killing it it will scale it forever so we, we, we pause it no scale position as well i can enable this one now hit play and see it's moving our position so the time effector can also be used 
in nice and a lot of situations. So for a good example, I have actually this scene and I have this wheel here, which I can simply, if I hit play, you can see nothing happens. So I simply can come in here to my MoGraph effectors and I'll choose time. I'll make it a child of the wheel. And like I did come to my um, deformer, I'll make it say it should affect the object as a whole. And then I'll come into the parameters. I don't want it to affect the H because it will be rotating it wrongly. I want it to affect the um, P, that's the pitch. So I'll increase the pitch to say 180. 1800 so 180 is fine and now hit play you can see it's rotating it right then i can simply also come in here and i'll add like position right um no actually i wanted to move on the z so because it's rotating so on the z and i'll add position unless you actually have you know it's going on the wrong like wrong way so i'll see minus um 100 let's see and if we hit play, you've created some fake view animation, and this one can go forever, right? Wherever we are, it will go forever and actually make you phase us, right? So that's the time also for you, and you can use it to create a lot of interesting stuff. You play, so we stop it. So that's the time um, effector tool for you. Next, we are going to use the random effector. So I'll create a new scene and I'll create something like, let's say, a sphere, right? And just like the other um, effectors, I can't move graph effector. And I'll choose random effector. I'll make it a child of the sphere. And then I'll come to the deformers and I'll set to object. Right now, you can see it has moved our sphere, right? So if I come to the effector menu in here you can see the random mode is set to a uh, random and this one has no animation on it but immediately we change it from random to something like say noise you can see now it has changed if i hit play and see it starts moving our sphere right so i can simply increase the animation speed or reduce it or i can come to the parameters and i'll actually increase the um y x and all of that and this one is random so this one is going to move randomly and this one i think will be very good when you are using it for object or stuff behind the scenes that needs a little bit of movement but not necessarily like specific because this one you don't really have control of the randomness like it moves the way it feels like so yeah you can come in here now if i hit you can see it's moving randomly back and forth you can reduce the animation speed if you want let's see 40 right and you can see now it has slowed down if we increase the skill let me actually make it smaller you can see it's yeah in this case see the scaling if we make it very big the movement will be a bit more subtle yeah so that's what you can use the random um, effector to, to do I mean you can use it in uh, like very useful and interesting ways to get a lot of animation and interesting stuff mind you all the um effectors that i've talked about there are a lot of them that can also do the same thing so for instance with the plane effectors you can actually use something like the um, formula effector and even the shader effector to also achieve the same effect right and with the random like this you can use the shader effector to get the same with the time effector you can also use the um formula effector to do what the time effector also did so most of the shade uh, effectors like can do what other effectors can do right so the formula effector too can be a little very very powerful and with that i have a whole tutorial on here about the formula effector and how it operates that one is also here on the uh, pixel affair channel on youtube you can also watch it now whilst we are talking about randomness let's move to the next way of animating without keyframe and with that one, I'm going to use the vibration because I'm talking about randomness. Let's talk about the vibration tag. So I'll delete the random and we have the sphere back in the center. If I right click the sphere and I come to animation tag and I add vibrate, you can see this tag has been applied, right? If you hit play, nothing happens, but you can simply enable 
what 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 um parameter or what position or you um rotation or skill you want to enable. So I'll enable the position, and if I hit play, you can okay. see now it also is giving it random less like the way the random effector was doing. Now one difference between the two is that so let me actually pause this one, right and the difference between the vibration randomness is this one is actually affecting the positions of the position scale and rotation of the actual object now with the effectors it was affecting the scale of the uh, the point of the object so let me actually quickly add the random effector quickly add the random um where is the random effector here i'll make it a child right and now if i come to pre um, deformers and i say i turn it on right and you can see i'm moving it but if i come into the um, select the object and come to its parameters you can see the coordinates it's still like the 27 which is the one that the vibration tag has actually applied right so the random one actually is moving the points right not necessarily the objects using the uh, psr of the object so yeah that's the difference so with the vibrate tag it's as simple as that you can add the animation you can so you can add some on the y and on the z as well you can see it's moving just like the random but this one is affecting the real position of the object i can enable scaling as well so if i enable scale you can see randomly it's scaling smaller and everything right and at the same time rotation by enable rotation this one because of the sphere you might not see it clearly but and let's disable a skill and maybe let's change the display so that we see what's happening so yeah you can see the rotation too is moving no angles so basically that's what the vibration tag does but one inter interesting thing about the vibration is that it, it doesn't do random stuff so we can actually make it do something predictable so if i disable say let me disable the rotation and let's focus on just the um position right i'll leave all this at zero and now if i hit play you can see it's moving or just on the side but if we check this regular pulse it will be moving in a predictable manner something that you can see it goes back and forth back and forth back and forth and this one is very predictable so you can use it to do something that have that regular pulse or that regular movement and this one is quite predictable so that's about the vibration the vibrate tag the next tool for automating animation is the c motion so i'll come create a new scene here and i'll simply create something like just say let me create a cube as usual and if i come to our character you can see in here we have c motion if i click it now we have a c motion all we have to do is to and the c motion naturally was created to help in rigging like when you rig something and you want to add like automated animation or something to it c motion was like actually created to do something like that so with the c motion all i have to do is to make the cube a child of the c motion select the c motion and come to um the object tab i'll drag the cube into the this particular uh, section here all right and now if we hit play nothing happens that's because if you check up here where it says work you can see it's set to static we can simply set it to line and if i hit play it should be moving actually you see the c motion is disabled so if i enable it and now i hit play you can see it's moving our object on the z axis right and that's important right so we can increase the way it should the amount of movement and now you can see it's moving as well so the c motion is very very interesting and very very powerful what we can do with the c motion actually let me go to my um the wheel scene where i have the wheel so actually let me in this wheel here i can actually you know what i can actually come to the time i'll allow the rotation to continue but i'll take off the position right so now our wheel is just rotating right and i can simply come into my 
um, character C motion, and I'll make this on the child of the C motion, right? And like I said, I'll drag it here, right? I'll make sure the work is set to line. And now, if I hit play, it's enabled. If I hit play, it should be, yeah, it's rotating. I mean, everything is fine. I don't know why it's jittering, but uh, let's go ahead and delete this, the material so that you focus on the animation. So if you see, it's rotating. Everything is rotating and it's giving it the animation. That is fine. But one interesting thing about the C motion is that we can actually let it follow some like um, a surface. So I'll come in here and I'll create something like say a landscape. Right. I'll make it a little bit bigger. And probably even in the landscape, I'll take off the uh, don't check the C whether so that it's a bit rough like that. Then I'll make it a little bit bigger. Bring it down a little so that you see what's going on here. Right? And in the C motion, you can see we have is it root here. In the root, we have surface. So you can tell it that it should follow this surface. So I'll put in this surface. And now you can see it has sort of entered the surface. So you know what? Let me first off come to filter and take off the work plane. All right? So now our wheel has entered the surface. Let's make the surface a bit darker so that we see what's happening. Oh, I mean, yeah, so this is our surface. Right now, it's entering the surface. So we can simply come into the C motion and the offset can move it up somewhere here. Right, so now if we hit play, you can see the wheel is following our surface. We can actually check this align hub so that see it's even though it's entering some point let's actually i don't know why let's increase the segments of the um maybe sometimes the segment that could be the issue but if we hit play let's hit play again yeah the points are plenty let me reduce it a little Still entering, so maybe you can use this as a so come to the C motion and the offset move move it up a little bit. Yeah, basically this was a quick way. I've actually not planned this, but yeah, this is a quick way that you can use the C motion and you can force it to follow like surfaces and stuff like that, right? And this one is like really interesting. So that's basically the C motion, and with the C motion as well, that's not all. We can simply also, um, let me actually delete the surface. And now it's back to the default line. We can make it follow a path. So I can simply create something like say, um, a circle, right? And now change the axis. I'll make it bigger, right? And in the C motion, come to the object. Instead of line, I can see path. And in the path, I can simply drag in this circle you can see now it's following a circle right let's make the circle a little bit smaller yeah so that's about the C motion as well and it's very powerful and interesting way of adding animation to your object without keyframing so the next way to automate your animation is by using espresso so I have this cube here I'll simply right click and come to programming tags and I'll choose Espresso. If you are using previous version, it probably was in um, Cinema 4D tags. Or you can simply type in Shift C, type in your Espresso and you double click on it to apply that tag, right? So what I'll do is just a simple, I'll drag in the cube into the Espresso window, right? And the next thing is I'll type time, which I have here. So I can simply search for time, which I have here. And now all I'll do is to connect the time to what um, parameter I want to contribute uh, to drive, right? So I select the cube. And let's say I want to drive the rotation of the cube, right? All I have to do is to connect 
the rotation h that's the um, heading so i can simply drag the time here put it on this blue input to find the coordinate i want to control right so i can come to a uh, rotation and i'll find the h and i'll pipe it in and now you can see it starts rotating our cube so if i go back and hit play it rotates our cube just like the time effect i was doing but the difference between this and the time effect is this one is actually not driving the point but it's actually controlling the real um, heading of the cube so if i select the cube you can see the h is actually changing the value of the h is changing right and the time is the movement of the project i mean the project setting as let me actually use something different so without the time i can also use um, the project setting so if i um, type ctrl d you can see it brings up a um, project settings i can simply drag in the project this particular icon here drag it in and we can simply drag, drag take you can see the project time anytime it's we hit play it keeps changing right the frames keep changing so we can simply drag and drop it on the output and now and connect that to the rotation so that we visually see what's happening right so now the same thing it's doing the same thing as the time um node right if we select the project setting you can see um actually type in the control d so this is whenever it changes drives the rotation of our um cube right so that's another way that you can actually animate without keyframe next is using dynamics now with dynamics you don't really have full control over it but then there are still ways that you can manipulate it to get something that you want so i have this cube here i'll simply right click and come to simulation tag and i'll add rigid body now if i hit play you can see it's falling it's moving downwards so technically you can see this is some sort of animation right yeah but then let's actually see if we can do something meaningful with only dynamics and without keyframe so I actually um move the cube up 100 centimeters all right so that will be on the floor and i have this floor object here right so if i right click on the floor and come to simulation and add a collider body now if we hit play you can see our cube is not moving nothing is happening right let's hide the floor all right nothing is happening now if we select our cubes um, dynamic tag and come to that um, dynamic you can see we have custom initial velocity so if we click on the custom initial velocity and see now we can give it our cube some initial velocity for it to move on it initially so if i come to initial linear velocity if i move the centimeter um, like say five 600 centimeters or something and hit play and see it's moving our cube on this angle or this direction we can change direction to some somewhere else and hit play and see it's moving it on the x right the same way we can let it go up if i hit play and see it's moving it upwards and it'll come back because of the dynamics right so if i let it continue playing see it's returning and the same thing on the z as well right so let's actually um set it back to zero another thing is in ro rotation you can do the same thing so i can come here and i hit uh, increase the rotation angular rotation and initial angular rotation and if i hit you can see it's rotating our cube the same thing if i take this one and hit you can see it's trying to rotate it but but because of that it's moving upwards right and the same thing applies to this side and see it's trying to rotate it so we can actually use this to do something very very useful i have a whole tutorial here on how to use dynamics only to actually get a cube to um row so here on youtube if i hit play you can see i have a full tutorial on how you can use dynamics to get a cube to be animating and moving and all of this was done with no keyframe so the cube be rolling from start to finish and even collide with other objects and this was the whole cube was moved entirely without any keyframe and it was fully dynamics so you can use dynamics to you can check this out and i mean you can use dynamics to do something like this so now if let me actually take off the floor right and now let's leave the cube as it is if i hit play go back uh, go down 
but let's take off the um, dynamics so if i type control d and come to project settings you can see you have dynamics right so let me actually take off the gravity so now if i hit play you can see the cube rotating without um falling right so now the angular that's where you can see the initial um angular velocities and stuff so if i take this one off and um let's say i make this one just 90. So you can see now we have some sort of rotation in here all right the same thing applies to the um other axis as well let me increase this and see what happens and see now because there's no um friction on the floor stopping it it's still moving and it can go a little bit and stuff so that's how you kind of use dynamics um to do some sort of animation and if you want to understand it more i watched the other tutorial I, I i showed about using dynamics for rolling cube next we are going to use particles and with this one we are actually diving into the real realm of unpredictability so here i have this cube and i'll make it a child right and i'll come into our simulation simulate in here we have particles and i'll enable the particle so with this one you don't really actually have any control especially when it comes to the initial position of the object maybe you can find a way but even the object disappears and it pops on and stuff like that but technically you can still consider it animation because i remember when i actually got into cinema 4d that was the first way i actually got something moving unknowingly and i remember i was very excited about it technically speaking you can say it's some sort of animation so i'll make the cube a child of the emitter and if i select the emitter and come to the particles you can see down here you can see shoe object and the cube disappears right now if i hit play you can see now it's giving us all these plenty cubes i'll pause it and go back so what it's doing is that it's giving us 10 cubes at every 30 frames right or like every second so i'll just just type in one here and now i'll make sure the stop emission is set to frame m um, 31 so if i hit play now it will produce only one um cube right so technically now it's moving the way we want so if you want it to go up i can simply take the emitter and rotate it this way um and if i hit play you can see it's going up so i mean technically we've created something but this is not really meaningful but then depending on what you want to do maybe it can be helpful or useful in some situations right you can go ahead and play around with other settings in the uh, emitter which i'll do a full video on how to use the emitter in cinema 4d now talking about unpredictability the next way we can automate our object animation is using the sound effector so same way i have this cube here and i'll come to my effectors and i'll choose um, the sound effector like i add the other effectors i'll make it a child and then come to the deformer see of affect objects right if i hit play nothing happens so we can use sound to control our object so if i come to the effector and come to the um effector tab you can see here we have soundtrack if i click on this arrow it tells us to load sound so i'll load um um any sound so i'll load let's say this and i'll open right now if we hit play you can see it's playing but nothing is happening that's because our um selection it's not actually affecting you see this selection we have here the yellow it's not affecting any of the um, waveform here so i can drag it to somewhere here probably make it a bit bigger and see right and now if we hit play you can see it's moving our cube so now you can tell um the sound effect i can come to the perimeter and now how far you want it to move if you want it to go on the side you can actually add that one as well so if we hit play again you can see it's moving our object but it's very very jittery and we don't really have proper control of it but basically technically speaking it makes our object um, move as well so probably you can what you can do is you can simply add let's say a delay effector the same thing set the delay effector deformer to object 
and now so that you're kind of smoothing the animation a little bit um let's hit play to see let's actually increase it more and hit play yeah so basically that's what you can do with the sound effect i have a full tutorial here about um how to animate with the sound effector and use it to animate this um, text and bunch of uh, spheres as well so you can check that one later so that's another way you can actually get object to move or be animated using the sound effector if you've made it to this end i really appreciate it and i'll say thank you for watching and i hope you learned something in this video kindly subscribe to the channel and please like share and if there is anything comment under this comment section and i'll reply thanks for watching once again and i'll see you in the next one